Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube tech guy. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Mobile Weekly slash Mobile Q&A. We go over all latest news that happened during the week of mobile and tech. If you have any questions you want to ask, just ask them in the comment section down below, and I will answer them before the end of the show. All right, guys, not too much news this week, so I just thought I'd talk about the topics that have kind of been out there uh, more recently. Um, a lot of it coming from the uh, chat GPT sphere, as well as some new phones and some new operating system updates. So I will get through these probably rather quickly. So if you do have any questions you want to ask about any of the devices out in the market or just anything in tech in general, let me know in the comment section. All right. <clears throat> Now, the first thing that did happen over the past week has been Bing integrating ChatGPT. So for those of you who don't know, ChatGPT uh, is basically a software where you can ask it a question and it can deliver something to you. Now, it can do more um, direct uh, commands more easily, such as uh, things that could easily be searched or things that could easily be, um, let me put this, uh, created as like there is a formula for a creation of it. So it's really good actually at writing code, I will say, uh, very good at writing code, uh, very good at writing uh, scripts, kind of basic ideas uh, for it. And I, the thing I would say that ChatGPT is great at is getting you started when you have writer's block. For instance, uh, I did um, want to change how my about me page was on um <clears throat> on the youtube tech guy on or sorry on youtube so i asked chat gbt to uh, m make an about me page uh for youtube or make a youtube description about uh the youtube tech guy yada yada and it gave me a very generic answer good but at least it got me kind of started to basically write my own new one. <clears throat> I did not, I would say of using it, I might've used 30% of what it originally said and the rest was uh, me kind of tailoring it towards me and what I uh, like to do. But that is how I would say that I would personally use ChatGPT as of right now. Now, Bing is basically integrating it into their system uh, by having, besides search, chat. And um, the interesting part is, is that when you do search on the main screen, it will have chat kind of on the side. I'm just kind of letting you know what response a chat would give. And this is pretty interesting right now because for the first time in a long time, I feel like Bing might get a little bit of a spike up. It's basically been dead, let's be honest. Um, as, an, uh, as a search engine, no one has used Bing that can use Google. Uh, Google is the dominant search engine in all of the web. And number two is YouTube. And then I think number three would either be Facebook or maybe even TikTok by now, as that has uh, gone through some changes as well. So yeah, all that kind of stuff is uh, currently in the mix. Then, to have a response, Google announced Google uh, Bard. Uh, so Bard is essentially Google's own AI, which they are bringing out to do the same kind of thing. Hey, ask the question, it will answer. Uh, give me pros and cons of an EV, it will do a pros and cons list. Pros and cons are another thing that, again, these AIs are pretty good at because it can typically give what it would, what most people would consider pros and what most people would consider cons. So that's the idea behind it uh, for overall just how it would work. Um, and it, Google was, <clears throat> there was some issues when Google presented it and that apparently hit their stock to go down like 9% in a day just because, oh, like Google, how weren't you, you know, better at this? up to the point where Google's own employees criticized how it was presented because it, I don't know if it wasn't done as much research or as good as it could have been, but um, it definitely just wasn't put in the best light for sure. So that is uh, one thing to note of how uh, Bard AI is getting started and it's not with the best start, but 
obviously Google has been doing this for a long time. I mean, we saw their demonstration, I want to say two plus years ago, if not almost three now, I want to say, when they demonstrated how Google Pixel phones could pick up and answer your call and the Google Assistant could have a conversation and book reservations for you or answer your phone. And uh, if it's a spammer, just kind of send them on their way. These are kind of things that are really the same kind of concept, but just used very differently. Uh, so I do believe Google's demonstration was just that, a poor demonstration. And I do believe that Google is still far and above uh, beyond uh, ChatGPT and more interested in how they're gonna implement it. And we are finding out some of the first ways. And the first way is that Google is working on bringing uh, Bard AI chat to Chrome OS. Now, the reason why I think this is really huge in a lot of ways is because the whole point of ChatGPT, right, is the fact that people are worried, can this help you uh, in your job? Can this help you also not only in your job, but can it help you as a student? And <laughs> this is big because if it comes to Chrome OS, it legit can like, if you're a student and you're taking a test, you could ask Bard AI the test question and it could give you an answer. <laughs> like that is pretty, very interesting, right? Like the fact that this legit can be used in a classroom on the thing that, l that literally schools have given students Chrome OS because they figured it was actually safer than giving a full Windows computer, not to mention cheaper, of course. But if, if you give Bard AI to Chrome OS, that is a big implementation to kind of go ahead. Um, but yeah, that, that's uh, the idea behind a lot of the AI stuff. I think it's really good at answering something that can be searched on the internet or with the internet's information, it could be created. But that is the extent of it kind of thing. Like it, it can le legit, um, people have hacked it to create malware even though they have protocols against it, of course, people are always gonna find a way around protocols. So these are the interesting things that I will say that AIs can currently do right now and are still limited in, because like I said, for like, if I were to write a script uh, with it, I would say me personally, I would use probably less than 50% of what it wrote, but I think it gives a good start of how you would do it or a good start of pros and cons, but it still does get newer information wrong because it scrubbed the internet in the past, not in necessarily the future. Meaning that the Galaxy S23, for instance, it would pretty much get almost all the information wrong because it literally is going off the information of the S22. Um, so that is kind of uh, where you can kind of see a hindrance of it so far. Uh, it being integrated into Bing is very interesting because that means it can possibly learn the future of the internet um, as well. So that's very different from what it can do right now. All right. Next, we go into a very exciting phone that I'm very curious about, and that is the Oppo Find N2 Flip. Now, this is obviously a competitor to Samsung's Flip 4. So very much so a competitor to this phone right here. And the idea behind it is, is that with this phone, we are going to get our first major competitor to a flip phone that we have not gotten uh, really outside of Motorola, uh, which they had two versions of the Razer and the second version didn't even come to, or sorry, the third version did not even come to the US. It was a China exclusive. So very curious to see how this ends up, quite frankly, because this one is going to be a global version, meaning it can be put in the US. Very, very interested to see how this goes. I'm sure some of my influencer friends already have it. Uh, but yeah, definitely curious to see how this goes exactly. The announcement, the launch date is only in three days away. So it will be announced and I'm curious on the price point because Samsung is very aggressive to do a thousand dollar price point for the flip. So will this be 900? Will this be 800? How will it be? Because for the first time we're getting one that's outside of China that anyone can buy and that it should work in the U S just fine. 
Um, so very curious to see how that will be. Very curious to see. Uh, we should have Google Apps on it as well because of this. Uh, you know, you don't have to silo them. So, yeah, very, very curious to see how this will turn out by the end of the week. Um, and, yeah, I would be uh, very interested to see how it will work. Um, so yeah, let's see. All right. Next up we have Android 14. Now Android 14 is, uh, not too many differences, but the biggest differences I will say that it's coming to Android 14 actually looks to be involving external displays and, uh, basically kind of upgrading, I would say apps to work better with Chrome OS. So it's actually a lot of the key features are going to be working around physical keyboards much better and having touch pad gestures. Now, why would you need to have that integrated? Well, an external keyboard and mouse or very easily a Chrome OS system to work better with your apps. And this is pretty important because right now this is holding a lot of Android apps back from working properly with Chrome OS and once Chrome OS gets full Android app integration, I think it really will help it out in terms of being a more all around computer replacement compared to what it is right now. I mean, we just got, um, what was the, oh God, what is the program? Uh, the new video editing software and I have it too. Um, I do not know LumaFusion. We just got LumaFusion, which is a full editing software. So the fact that you can bring that to it would be pretty big. So very interested to see how that goes. All right. And then finally, we have another really big one or more interesting one with probably the coolest, coolest um, SIM card removal tray I've ever seen. Um, Realme has released a Coca-Cola edition phone of the 10 Pro, as you can see right here. But like I said, the coolest thing that I see is the bottle cap SIM card opener. I think that is such a interesting touch. Now, of course, there have been a lot of brands that have gotten special edition phones. I do think it's actually a pretty good looking one. Like, I'm not a Coke fanatic, but like that <laughs> Coke fanatic sounds very, very wrong. Um, uh, uh, but yes, it's so, it's such a, cool looking design really um and your icons are like this on there some of these are kind of dated looking like these three old-fashioned 3d effect things but some of them are okay um overall i just think I, I the biggest thing that stood out to me was this coke bottle opener uh sim card tray just i thought that was funny uh because you open it when you open your phone uh, but yeah, so all of that stuff is coming. All right, guys, like I said, not as much news today. Um, so if you do have any questions or are you curious about anything in tech right now that you want me to look up, are you looking for any specific tech that you're thinking about buying right now and have any questions about, let me know in the comment section and I'll try to help you out today. I'm getting my S23 tomorrow. Heck yeah. Nice. I am getting it on Wednesday, I believe. I'm taking Friday off so I can create lots and lots of content for you guys. So let us know that is coming. A uh, lot of content coming out this week, as well as you're going to start to see more of the quick videos that I promised, which are the should you buy it vertical videos, uh, which are just quick under 60 second videos that basically say should you buy a product and how I use it and what I think it's good for that you might want to get as well. All right, um, Samsung messages, Google messages, your thoughts. Um, I have made the switch uh, for the most part um, back and forth. What am I currently using right now? Actually, I was gonna say, yeah, so I am using Google messages uh, right now, right? I'm using Google messages. I'm I'm just like I remember the thing changed, but now it's like it just says messages. So I legit I'm trying to remember which one Google Messages. Okay, yeah, I am using Google Messages uh, right now. Um, I really liked it because I feel like it runs the best with um, uh, what's it called. Um, it works the best for R T R. Oh my God, I forgot the RST, RTS. 
Um, text message replacement. Um, man, I can't believe I forgot it. Rich text. It's rich text, right? Someone tell me uh, real quick. What is the uh, RCS? RCS. Oh my God. I can't believe I forgot that. Um, yeah. Uh, rich communication services. Um, R RCS. It works, I think, better with RCS Google messages. So that's why I currently use it out of all of them. Yes. Quiet Storm. Thank you. It was RCS. Um, so yeah, it, I think it works the best out of the current ones right now with when it comes to RCS. Uh, not to mention also, I love the reactions you could do. Um, which iPhone users uh, now get Android users saying, uh, like, Ricky liked your message instead of the like button, because that's hilarious. Um, so I'm all for that. So yeah, uh, very interested in just to see how it progresses. But I have made the switch to Google Messages for a little while right now, at least since I think I got the fold, I kind of uh, moved over to that. Um, so yeah, I went back and forth a lot. But as of right now, I, I'm on, I've been on Google Messages and I have no reason to kind of go back or don't like anything about it uh, to make me want to go back, I should say. Um, hi, Ricky. Two questions, if I may. Uh, which app would you uh, recommend to protect and keep your data safe from viruses and cookies on Windows, laptop, and Android phone? Cheers um so for android um i actually do not use anything in particular uh i would recommend using a vpn if you're more um kind of curious about like your information being taken i again i've never really been a fan of virus protection on android just because unless you really download or click something completely wrong you're never going to get a virus on android um, I think it was literally like 99.7% of viruses on Android come from outside of the Google Play Store. So you're never going to get it from the Google Play Store um, from it. Uh, in terms of VPNs, uh, the one I still use uh, on my phone that I always have available is Proton VPN. So that's the one I kind of always uh, go for. So if you do want a VPN, that's the one I still use. It's a free VPN. You can use a paid for one if you want to. But yeah, um, that's what you can do with it um in terms of uh let's see what else oh in terms of windows i actually just use windows defender windows defender is built in and it does a better job than most antivirus software while being very lightweight um i will say so yeah i just use that a lot um and everything goes pretty good it's built in virus protection is really awesome i haven't used a traditional antivirus software for at least oh man i haven't used an antivirus software for i don't know at least like five years i would say um now you always want to back up your stuff so i always have like a lot of my stuff backed up on external drives just in case of anything but that is one thing that i do recommend to always do every once in a while I pretty much do it once every month, once every three months. Back up all my stuff in external drive just so I have it um, ready kind of thing, if anything would happen. Uh, the biggest thing that I would say you would want to use internet security for is more ransomware. Uh, because basically if someone gets a hold of your uh, computer, they can hold it ransom at ransom and basically you can't do anything with it um, unless you pay them. Um, certain internet securities are pretty good at uh, protecting against ransomware, so that's what I would more use it for. Uh, me, I would just reset my computer. But I, I, I have everything backed up, so I, I am allotted that to be able to do that. Um, let's see. Uh, which is a free, secure online storage facility app you would recommend... Uh, for multiple family access to sensitive family documents like deeds. Much appreciated. Ooh, I I don't know what I would trust for that. I would honestly trust that kind of stuff more in an external uh, storage. Like, I, you know, I always have an external drive of uh, 256 gigs on my keys. That's where I would keep, like, sensitive material like that, like uh, deeds and information such as that. Um, you could keep it. I would say the two 
biggest ones that I would personally recommend, um, and this is just because I, they have the best security and have not been hacked yet, and that is uh, Google Drive and uh, Apple's uh, iCloud. Um, now, iClouds have been broken into more so uh, through their phones. Um, so people have broken into an iCloud account more easily than a Google Drive account. Uh, but at least, you know, they have better security protection on their online storage than most. Uh, like I would trust Google Drive over like a Dropbox or a Box, uh, you know, uh, or any of the, a lot of the online storage solutions. Um, I don't know if I would trust something that sensitive, like a deed to it. Um, but I have sent, um, you can also send a certain expiration, uh, email, uh, stuff. So like I have sent as a real estate agent, I, um, sent things through Google that had an expiration time. Uh, so a person can no longer see it after that time. So you could send an email like that, like it expires in 90 days or 30 days. I think I did one time an email that only would be good for like 48 hours. Um, and it was because it was wiring information. So I sent it and it was removed. Uh, like they had no access to that email after 48 hours. Um, so those are certain kind of things you can uh, do. Um, what about personal vault on OneDrive? Uh, OneDrive might not be a bad one to go with. Uh, I know they do have a personal vault uh, one as well uh, that is supposed to be more secure. Um, it That might be okay. I, I mean, all of these have 256-bit encryption, so it's kind of hard to beat that uh, in terms of security. Um, but they all have that same kind of encryption, and you can create a password behind it to get into that file section as well. Um, you can also, you know, leave it on a laptop that has a, um, that you need a USB to open it up to. So that would be another option. If you wanted more of a physical option is you could literally have a laptop that you can't get into without a, uh, physical secure drive. And unless that drive connects to it, Google has a lot of these kind of solutions. Um, it will not unlock. So that could be another one. I mean, there, there's lots of different ways you can secure stuff. Uh, but just online, you're always taking a bit of a risk. Um, Microsoft, as well as I believe, has never been broken into, so I think that should be fine. Uh, but yeah, I would I would say most of my stuff I would trust Google. If I had to put that kind of stuff online, I would probably trust Google. Uh, One uh, OneDrive wouldn't be too far off because I do back back up certain documents onto OneDrive in under the personal uh thing. Uh, but yeah, those are always just different ways. You're taking a risk no matter what if it's online. I guess that's the moral of the story. All right. Um, let me go say hi. Hi. Um, let's see. Big fan of Disney. So am I. Did you see the new Gardens of the Galaxy trailer for the Super Bowl? They did Gardens of the Galaxy, Indiana Jones, uh, Transformers, and Creed Three. I've seen so far. Um, but yeah, let's see. Bought my first OLED TV. I went with the Samsung S95B. Awesome, especially with the deals on Best Buy during the Super Bowl. That's always a great time to buy a TV. Best Buy has insane deals during that time. Um, I was looking at a QLED, uh, amazing on Amazon, better uh, than Sony in my opinion. That's pretty interesting because Sony has really won uh, when it comes to, uh, what do you call it, having the uh, biggest uh, presence, I would say, when it comes to OLED. Uh, Sony and LG are the most famous ones, obviously. Samsung is starting uh, but obviously, Samsung has had the most experience for years when it comes to mobile phones. So it's not like they're starting from ground zero is what I'm kind of letting people know. It's like, Samsung has been doing this for a while. They just haven't been doing it this big of a screen. That's what they're new to in this presence. Um, and I love Android. There you go. I love Android too. Uh, will you be Will you get be getting one of the Galaxy Books for, in for review? 
What are your thoughts about them? Um, I will not be getting the Galaxy Books uh, in for review, unfortunately. Um, Samsung just hasn't selected to make me be one of those reviewers that get their laptops. Um, I will say I typically feel that Samsung laptops are a little bit overpriced. Um, now I feel the same way about Razer in some instances, like they are priced higher than their counterparts. Um, I am absolutely in love with the laptop that I currently do have. Um, and I, I, I have become a big fan of that company when it comes to their laptops and that's Asus. I have the Asus Zephyrus G 14 and, um, this laptop could easily beat, um, two of the laptops that Samsung had, or three of the laptops that Samsung presented. Uh, now, laptop, Samsung is going to have a higher-end one that's uh, more meant for content creators. But for that price point, I can get an Asus Flow X13, which is the laptop I'm currently looking at to upgrade to this year, which is far better and under and lighter weight than even that one is. Um, so, yeah, I'm very curious to see how Samsung's cooling is going to be on uh, their higher-end one. But... Yeah, very curious to see how that one's going to be. I was excited for this, uh, for the laptop they showed off, the the creator one, uh, with the built-in, I want to say it was a built-in, was it a 4060 or 4070? Maybe even a 4070. And that one looked really interesting to me. Like, I'm like, oh, wow, Samsung really brought it. And, of course, they have the best displays. Um, so, while there are some things I'm really interested about it, I don't think I would get it um, just because I would probably get an Asus for a cheaper price that would have the same specs, if not better. Uh, might not have the might not have as good a display, but I literally dock my laptop almost every time uh, so I can have on my big monitor uh, from Gigabyte, the Aorus, uh 48 inch uh, uh, TV monitor uh, that I have in front of me right now. All right. Um, What's the difference between Google Message and the regular message app? Um, I honestly haven't done as much uh, with them, to be quite honest, um, in terms of uh, Samsung message app for a while. I just haven't used it. Um, but I just like the way Google Message is kind of simplistic uh, to it. And I don't know, I've just, I've liked it uh, because it's become more of the default on most Android devices. So because of that, I've kind of wanted to keep using that one because when I do tutorials, if it's the default message app that most people use, then i rather use that one. Uh, but um, in terms of it, Samsung had like more customization before and Google was kind of uh, stood still. I will say Google has kind of caught up a little bit more, but I would say customizability, uh, maybe Samsung has more, but yeah, I, I don't know. Like, a Samsung used to be able to schedule text messages. That was kind of cool. Google couldn't. Um, so there are certain things like that. So, yeah. Um, cool. What about avoiding uh, tracking cookies? Um, I don't really uh, care too much about tra that many tracking cookies, um, unless it's, um, you know, security-wise. Uh, but in terms of most tracking cookies, you can just use a different web browser. Google will allow for more tracking cookies than most. Uh, but if you use a different web browser or a different search engine like DuckDuckGo, Firefox uh, is going to be better for not tracking as well. Uh, so there are other, other web browsers are going to be better for not tracking. So it's mainly just a web browser you use so that it, you won't be tracked uh, would be the best uh, scenario. Let's see. All right. Um, thanks. There is a good base app uh, that allows you to put a photo with a description. Uh, thank you for a great channel. Oh, cool. Um, let's see. You could always use paper, lol. Good good point, Quiet Storm. You could always just use paper for uh, very secure things. I'm going to order the S10 tomorrow uh, on Macari. Cool. And there's one of these. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, the S10 is still a great phone and gives you kind of everything you need for the price. Um, yeah, it's so interesting right now. 
um, just seeing like there, there really is like such a paradigm shift in terms of smartphones have been fast for the last four or five years, to be honest. Like you don't need much faster. If you got a flagship smartphone four or five years ago, it's all the speed you need, right? Like you really don't need a faster phone. I feel like um, that we've kind of plateaued when it comes to the speed of a phone, other than if you're gaming on the phone or something like that, right? Then you need more graphics. But the CPU of a phone, I don't think needs to be much faster. I think it's more of the fact that you need, uh, you know, better graphics, um, better battery life. So better um, the ability to be that fast, but also give better battery life for uh, people. And then um, lastly, just the processing on certain things like uh, voice recognition, like uh, photography, um, security, things like that are, I think, more of what we kind of need now at this point. I just got a Mac for the first time, but still have an Android. Any suggestions on how to help them work together? <sighs> Let's see. Um, I don't know if Samsung has anything, or I guess what Android do you have, first of all? Uh, one thing you can do is you can use Android messages. So if you use Google messages on your phone, uh, you can go to, I think it's messages.google. Yeah, messages.google.com to link uh, your phone text messages to your computer. And that will make it uh, just be like that. Um, I don't know, again, which. Um... So you do have a Samsung smartphone. Um... Samsung used to have a program called Samsung SideSync. I don't think that's available anymore, but um, Samsung Galaxy. Um, let's see. Transfer content. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's still Android Air app, which is kind of interesting. That's a way to wirelessly transfer files between your phone and your Mac. Um... There's apparently a program called SyncMate that will allow you to connect it to it, but I've never heard of it, so I don't know if I trust it. Um, yeah, that, that would be the number one thing, that your text messages from your computer um, to do that. And yeah, I don't know if Samsung, I don't think Samsung has anything like they used to have something called a uh, side sync, which allowed you to mirror your phone to your Mac. Uh, but they got rid of that and stopped supporting it a long time ago. Maybe since you have an S9, it might still be available. Um, it's called Smart Switch. Well, Smart Switch will allow you to transfer over everything, but I don't think it'll allow you to keep it synced, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but yes, uh, you can transfer over to a Mac, um, but I don't no i don't know if it'll allow you to keep it on there smart search transfer don't worry smart search allows you to transfer contacts photos so yeah it'll allow you to back up everything to your mac that's on your galaxy phone uh using the smart switch app from the mac store but that's a, that's just backing it up once it's not keeping it in sync so yeah um, let's see. Uh, got some S23 Ultra 12 days before its release. Wow. I'm, I'm very jealous. 12 days. Dang, Scooter. <laughs> can't wait for your S23 Ultra. I, I can't wait to have it so I can do the videos. Uh, so yeah. 
Uh, sometime 5G doesn't always seem that fast. Should be, um, what's the deal? Um, quite frankly, um, it's just this. 5G has three bands. Low band, mid band, and high band. Low band is basically 4G, sometimes even slower than 4G, uh, but this is the thing. Your phone is going to switch to 5G if it's there. If not, it'll stick on LTE. So sometimes uh, low band is available of 5G, so your phone automatically goes from LTE to low band, and it's going to stay at low band. Even if the LTE is faster in that area, it's staying at the low band. So that's why sometimes 5G is very slow and definitely not the speed you expect it at. Um, the, the second one is mid-band. Mid-band is currently the one being spread in the U.S. right now, and uh, low-band is pretty much in the U.S. So if you have T-Mobile or AT&T, low-band is everywhere. You're good. It's not fast. Um, so yeah, that's the thing. Uh, low-band is all about more consistency. So uh, the biggest thing I said uh, when uh, low-band was really coming out for the first time that I said you could definitely see the difference is I was able to have internet connection from LA to Vegas, that entire drive there. That was not something I was able to have before, but with low band, it consistently stayed uh, good. So that's the first thing, right? Then I will say the other thing was that um, with the low band, uh, that came out with T-Mobile first, and then AT&T got on board. The only one that had the mid band at the time was Sprint. T-Mobile bought Sprint and then converted to its own network. So mid-band is much faster. Uh, to give you an idea about numbers, LTE typically was around 25 megabits per second, or it could be as low as five, to be quite frank. But uh, good LTE was anywhere from 25 megabits per second all the way up to 75 or sometimes even 100 on the extreme end. Low band uh, is pretty much uh, should be between 50 and 150 megabits per second, depending on how good your low band is. Mid band is, uh, starts at 150 megabits per second and goes all the way up to 400, 500 megabits per second. That's extremely fast for uh, internet on the go. And that's why the promise of 5G was pretty much mid band. Um, but it's only in major cities and only in those major parts of the major cities, if that makes sense. So basically in downtown LA, you'll have mid-band. In uh, very populated areas of New York, you might have some mid-band. Um, also in certain cities where it started, like Kansas City, certain, <laughs> they just won the Super Bowl, so funny. But like certain cities uh, had more mid-band, uh, but they are in the cities. They are not outside of the big cities uh, still yet. Um, so that's mid band. And then there's high band. High band is what Verizon and AT&T started off with, uh, much to uh, the dismay of all of their customers. Five band is basically a thousand gigabits per second. Your 800 is slow at there. It can go up to 1.5 gigabits per second. So really fast. But here's the thing. This is the problem with, um, this is the problem with, uh, you know, uh, high band. This is my phone. And let's say, you know, right here is the uh, tower. So the tower is right next to me. This is my phone. I now I'm cut off from 5G. 5G high band cannot penetrate anything. So yeah, that's the problem of high band is that it can't penetrate anything and uh, the most extreme uh, version of this was shown when if you were uh, at the Verizon, one of the Verizon towers, as soon as you turn the corner of a building and you no longer had line of sight because you turned, you no longer had high band 5G. That, that is how weak it is. Technically rain or a leaf can block high band 5G. It has to have line of sight, basically, like an IR blaster used to, had to have line of sight to be able to work. Same exact thing. That's also the principle, by the way, of Wi-Fi 6E as well as Wi-Fi 7. It has to have line of sight to go that fast. Um, so that is why 5G is not as fast as you feel it should be sometimes. 
Uh, it can technically be slower than LTE at times if it's uh, weaker in your area. And if it is, uh, if you feel that 5G is uh, slower than your phone used to be, then turn 5G off. And you'll save battery that way too. All right, let's get to the next question. Um, last one for me. What do you think Samsung will do for trade-in wise uh, for the Fold 4 and the Fold 5? Latest rumors on it. Um, I mean, you know, we have heard that Samsung is reconsidering all of their trade-ins and all that kind of stuff, but nothing has happened yet. So, that being said, we have to find out. We have to literally find out what Samsung will do. Um, you know, my guess is they, they're not, they haven't changed the trade-in values yet, which means they're either going to trade it after, uh, the pre-orders, um, or they won't change it at all. Uh, now, what does this mean for the Fold uh, 5? I don't know. Because I I definitely thought my Fold 4 would get me a 1000 uh for the Fold 5. But now, obviously, it didn't even get a 1000 bucks for this trade-in. I think it was like 800 or 750 if I'm not mistaken, or 850 Whatever, it was under 1000 bucks. It was under 900 bucks. So, yeah, that, that does have definitely have me worried. All right, Samsung had categories for text. Uh, Google didn't a few months ago. Yeah, so you can do categories too. Um, how did the S10 get Android 12? Uh, I do not know. I do not. I have not had. I, I unfortunately switch phones every six months, so I do not have. Um, yeah, the that ability. Um, hey Ricky, I'm looking for some noise canceling earbuds. Um, I believe. Uh, I've been looking at the Momentum 3. My main issue is noise canceling aspect with other buds. Uh, what would you suggest? Um, I have used probably the top end recommended ones, which are the Sony MX4's earbuds. Uh, so those are definitely uh, one of the higher end ones that are really good. Sony MX4. So let's go ahead and show you. So, these are the ones that I do have. You can get them refurbished for as low as one sixty nine. That's a really good deal. Bose are definitely have to be in the category too because these are supposed to be uh, the world's best noise cancellation earbuds on the market. Uh, I have not tried them out. Uh, the Sony's I cannot say enough good things about though. Definitely love them uh, in noise canceling. They're probably the best noise canceling ones I have tried. So I will say that. So those are the Sony's and then these are the Bose. Um, but yeah, again, I have not tried the Bose. So just know that. Now, my favorite earbuds that I will always kind of always go on about are the Jabra's. However, I will say the noise canceling isn't as good. So take that um, in terms of compared to the Sony's. I think uh, they do, uh, the Sony's do make better noise canceling. So yeah, that will, is what I will say for there. And, but those are three recommendations for you. Uh, Jabra are the best fitting for me. I've never had earbuds that fit better than Jabra still to this day. And there is a reason why literally every show, every show you can ask me about what earbuds are and these are always in my pocket always in my pocket because they're my go-to ones a special yt channel is approaching i don't know what you're talking about quiet storm let me know any hints on what's quiet i don't know i don't know what he's talking about um hopefully they're approaching soon because I, I do plan on wrapping up in the next five to ten minutes uh so we'll see uh but yeah let me know what you guys think uh right now on anything going on i wonder if sony can pass starbucks test uh, i've not tested them out yet at starbucks that is a, a test that i have to do i think i'm gonna make the starbucks test a short too just so we can kind of always have that because i feel like that is something in the earbuds review that i usually do go over but i feel like i should also just do a starbucks test for the earbuds uh so you guys can see it uh right away if it passes or fails the starbucks test uh, for those of you uh, who are wondering what we're talking about is, um, um, oh, an anniversary is approaching. Got it. 
Um, yes. Uh, oh. That's today, actually, isn't it? Oh, the 16th. I was like, it. I was like, wait, did wasn't it? Yes, uh, four days away. In four days, I will have been doing this for 11 years. 11 years have been doing this. Crazy how time flies. Yeah, 11 years been doing this. Um, and hopefully more to come. Uh, I am working on getting uh, better cameras. That is one thing that I will let you guys know that I'm currently uh, looking at. But yeah. The new Sony Walkman. So here's the thing. Sony has made a Walkman like every year. Every year. But it, it suddenly got attention because of TikTok videos. And like it's become this like cool thing to have a retro thing again. Um, but so there are two, like, again, Sony's had this Walkman every single year. So there is a high end one and there's a really cheap one. Um, you can even get the earbuds version of it. Like they, they have had one every year. Right. So this is the one that's the one that, uh, got popular on, uh, TikTok, if I'm not mistaken. Which again, they come out with one every year. Like they, they've they've always come out with one. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's been just something that they've always done. But yeah, it got popular on TikTok, so a lot of people are like, What? And yeah, it's just it's a high end Walkman. It takes insanely high end quality earbuds, uh, that you can have the two channel high end earbuds, um, that are like reference earbuds, uh, put into them. Um, and yeah, it, it, it's, it's the greatest audio. Like I, I've, I've listened to these, uh, devices. They've had them at CES, except for this year. They didn't have like a thing from there, but yeah, it's just something that they've, uh, always kind of had where you can get tested out, uh, the highest in audio. They have reference audio quality, amazing, like things that, and it's, it's better audio than you've hear for sure. Uh, then you also get this cheaper version, you know, old school looking one, uh, reminds me of the creative Zens back in the day, a uh, very basic, uh, style. So yeah, they, they have, they make them both, but yeah, they, they started coming, uh, uh, popular and TikTok because of all that stuff. All right. Um, let's see. I've been watching since then. Uh, do Jabra use either, uh, either or ear piece uh does it work or uh does it use a master bud it uses a master bud so the reason why i like jabras so much and why i always recommend jabras is because they're the only earphones or earbuds um that seamlessly sony does do it as well anchor does do it as well but you have to do it through the app jabras are the earbuds that i can connect two devices to simultaneously regardless of what brand they are and they just work so that's one thing that i will always love jabras for i can connect my jabras to my laptop and my phone at the same time i can connect it to my tablet and another phone at the same time it doesn't matter which device. i can connect them to both phones at the same time so i rock two phones jabras can be connected to both of them at the same time so yeah it's just it's one thing i absolutely love but they do have to have a master bud in order to do that technology. Whereas like before the update to where they could pair the two devices, uh, you could use the left as the uh, main bud or the right as the main bud and have the other one in the case. Now, since they did that update, you can only do uh, the left has to be uh, working with the right and the right has to be the master. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, one thing that they did. Um, Let's see. You changed your name. Greatest job. A great job, bro. Thank you. Yes, I changed my name a while ago. Uh, where are you from, bro? Los Angeles. Um, but yeah, guys, I think we are going to call it a show in a bit. Um, lots of content coming out, obviously, as soon as I get my hands on the S23. So very excited to do that. Um, it just... Yeah, something I've wanted to do for a while now. So very happy to get that back. Uh, very happy just to be able to have that yet again. And yeah, show off to you guys all the stuff 
of the Samsung S23. We have cases already for it. We are ready to go. We just need to get the phone in. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, we're still going to have the Gravistar uh, speaker and earbuds. Uh, some delays happened with that. So that one should be coming out this week, though, um, as well as some check out the tech. So basically this week, I'm hoping to have at least five videos out before Saturday or Sunday. A uh, lot of content coming out and won't be stopping. Uh, going to fill up content throughout the month and uh, just shot some B-roll of my kitchen finally being done. So going to present that to Samsung and see what happens there. Uh, but yeah, uh, let me know anything else, guys, um, that you guys want to see this week. Uh, and follow me all over um, on the internet at YouTube Tech Guy for all my social feeds, such as Instagram, Twitter, everywhere else. Follow me, TikTok, I'm on there too. I, I will promise to do more videos on TikTok if you do follow me there. I'm, I'm just going to basically, if you if you follow me on YouTube, you don't necessarily have to follow me on TikTok because every short YouTube short that I put up here, I will put up on there. So, fairly simple. Another great show as always. Uh, did you get my? Did you get that five dollar super sticker? Uh, I did not see any five dollar super chat today. Uh, but again, thank you for even just off, like attempting to do it. That would be, that's awesome. Uh, didn't see it. Uh, but again, it could just be that it didn't come through or whatever happened. Uh, but yeah. Uh, thank you guys as always for visiting. Um, I. <sighs> A lot of stuff happening right now in personal life, uh, work-wise, on my nine-to-five job, um, getting a promotion, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, interesting to see how that will go. And it's so funny because I swear at the beginning of this year, I was almost ready to walk away from the corporate world and just kind of do YouTube. Um, but yeah, all go show you never know what's gonna what curveballs are gonna be thrown at you and what opportunities you should always try to take advantage of. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below about all the latest products and tell me what videos you want me to do for the Samsung Galaxy S23. I know we're gonna have a lot, you know we're gonna have a lot. You know we're gonna have uh, camera comparisons, we're gonna have everything in the, under the sun, but can't wait to uh, see uh, what else has to offer out there. Thank you guys as always so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Make sure before you leave, you hit that like thumbs up button. And I always do appreciate it. And it helps out the channel. It has been R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube tech guy.